Hi everyone, welcome to a new lecture. I want to move into some interesting ideas about culture, technology, and innovations. More so, I want to think about global impacts. Particularly, I want to look at the Japanese culture and how it's influencing technology and innovation today, especially in our society in America. If we think about it, culture has a connotation. Culture can be your house. In your house, it might be appropriate to wear your shoes anywhere in your house. Go to your neighbor's house, which is a new culture. It might be appropriate to take your shoes off in their mudroom, a small room that passes between the main entry and the household in our living areas. In a Japanese household, you'll find that it's unacceptable to wear shoes inside at all, so they ask you to take them off before you enter the house out of respect. So culture has a lot of things involved in it. It might be the language, the clothes we wear, the way we style our hair, the glasses we wear or don't wear. This has the same influences on technology today. And we'll look at a little bit of information about how technology is really changing our society and reflecting off of growth and innovation and in technology in Japan. Let's look at this idea itself. What is artificial intelligence? Well, a lot of people think right away robots. We think of the sweepers that run around the house uncontrolled by us, but go back and charge when they need it and drive back out when they think there's dirt around and keep working. Well, artificial intelligence is everywhere. We'll see this reflected in art, music, writing. We see it in our automobile technology. We see it in housing, manufacturing, and in nanotechnology, especially in the health field. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll be talking about these areas in particular. We'll look at housing, we'll look at manufacturing, and we'll look at the small tech, the really tiny microscopic technologies, a part of other lectures. Today, I'm going to focus a little bit about art, music, and kind of the writing aspect or the language aspect of how Japanese culture, innovation, and technologies have come across the big pond and entered into the United States and we're mimicking life over there and we're utilizing their technologies to brighten our world. What drives all of this? Why are we so interested? Well culture is everything and a lot of times we take a little bit of every culture just like America became a melting pot of societies immigrating for religious freedom or speech freedom we do the same things today. We look at freedoms and information. We look at systems that we like and we adapt them. And we make them suit for our lifestyles and bring us to a higher level of learning, education, and happiness. A couple of things that will spark a lot of people's minds today right away is the anime idea. Or something I'm into and it's kind of cool is something new is a Hatsumiku. I'm going to break out from this for one second and open up just on a YouTube link because it'll be a little faster than running from my program. So you bear with me. Uh, one of the most interesting new, well, actually, let's see if this will run first, gang. Sorry, I present back. Is this kind of idea, we'll run it from here. I'll pass just a second to explain this. When we think about technology and I think about Star Wars in 1977 when I was a youth it was incredible to see R2-D2 and 3PO talking they were robotic they were future they moved on their own they had their own minds and own functionality but R2-D2 was able to project a 3D hologram to explain information that was needed to humans back then which was a futuristic appeal Today, this is coming around in culture. We see this happening right now. Part of this is now concerts. When I was youth, we used to go to a regular show, musicians, and they'd play. It was over you leave, but now it's kind of interactive and involved. So we're going to see in this the same interaction. But if you look at the idea of the stage, at first, people were in the foreground with glow sticks or becoming interactive parts themselves are kind of animated and artificial in the way they're moving these pieces around and becoming a light source themselves, a transition of language, a motivation, and energy. In the background you see the stage is kind of exploding. There's musicians that are tucked behind, the actual humans, but what's the key and the most exciting thing is the actual singer is going to be a 3D animation propelled on stage through incredible graphics. Let's take a deeper look and just watch the excitement. 
interesting inside of this is the fact that the person is actually engaging the audience to show you're in a stadium with no live people, but they're here to see this anime person who is a, essentially a hologram projecting 3D. The voice you hear is incredibly humanistic. Excitement's really changing our culture. We first saw this in anime. When I was doing my dissertation work originally, I first started following a group of young students who were engaged inside the anime, the drawings, the two-dimensional aspect of this cultural idea. It was interesting to me because the lessons being learned in this were greater than just comics. They were about love and relationships, sexuality, problems with how to deal with your parents or puberty. They talked about bullying and jealousy and how to overcome and adapt them. We're seeing this same thing and understanding it now in translations in this 3D animated music art, which you see how people from this little clip of a video I just played are becoming part of the art themselves. And the music all has themes, and the same themes, and they're teaching each other to respect each other or love or how to work in a good relationship. They're talking about sexuality. All these things that are hard to talk about, but they're expressed through the art form, the same as anime, originally started this cultural idea. Interesting, the governments, and especially in Japan, have taken on to this to understanding the meaning to say, oh wow, maybe there's a way we can involve ourselves in this and utilize this. Today in society, we recently just saw another youth in Bedford, Pennsylvania, unfortunately took her life after being bullied on social media. In Japan, this is a taboo because they already have a problem with suicide in the culture overall and trying to way, find ways to combat this. They're bringing in cultural aspects of the art and technology there to send out the messages to young people about bullying and relationships and how to have a healthy environment and culture to take care of and nurture each other. This is more or less what we call a PSA here, a public service announcement done by the government to stop bullying, but they did it through the anime. Let's see if this will work off of this. If you think about this, it's already come across with a multiple things. There's jealousy, there's fashion, which young girls can have jealousy over, somebody else having a more expensive bag and mocking somebody for a cheaper one. It gets into relationships, and eventually it gets into how all these aspects accumulate into bullying type of relationships and how to combat that and think about people as equal or bags as equal. And it goes through this theme through the anime. The technology itself is increasing the way our culture and our society is adapting Japanese interests and innovations to create ways to compact the bullying itself. If we wouldn't have seen this as well, there was a recent case in Texas where a young girl is being sentenced to 20 years for texting to her boyfriend to kill himself where the poor soul actually took his own life. 
So this might be something that we can adapt in our society of the technology, the art, and the innovation to help young people learn these type of influences are harmful and how to combat this in our society. Japanese seems to be overwhelmingly the influence in this. And that's why America is starting to move to look at the way that society is conditionally changing their culture through the innovations and adaptions. Our students here, and you, maybe in your capstone, might be thinking about how you can change the world or help someone else. Maybe you incorporate the art of your anime into something like this in an app about expressing yourself or changing or accepting uh, and changing ideas on gender or race and language and culture or hairstyle. Japanese students are doing this themselves. They're kind of breaking the essential idea of what we are and how we are. We always think about Hollywood and how it influences us as well. Hollywood is taking on these associations and uh, there's a bunch of I mean, I know this won't work, so I'm going to break out a second, but actress Kirsten Dunst is doing a parody of old 80s music and bringing it in to show how cool the culture and innovation is. So it's kind of neat that it's being reflected today in Hollywood ideas. I'm going to click on just to play a second of this, if you guys don't mind. the animation flowing, the fantasy, the digital transmission of the magic wand. Or bringing anime into life, kind of from her culture, and making her body and everything like this. So then she translates into the same thing as though she is a fluid person inside the culture. So she'll change back and forth and highlighting some of this, you know, really rich animation and innovations in the art itself. But you can tell through some of the small things that are happening today in society here that, you know, we are starting to really accept the ideas of innovations from others, which is really a fascinating idea overall to us. And we're adapting from the Japanese culture these innovations that are changing their society and helping them grow. What are some of the key ideas about this? Well, Japanese culture has always been technology oriented. If we look back, the Japanese culture sent engineers over to learn how we made steel. They brought them into the lowest job forces and they learned how manufacturing and milling happened in our steel mills and brought that technology back and looked at the errors in it, changed them and created their own steel mills that were better. Hence, our steel mills are gone today. But we're starting to break that normalizing culture to where we are teaching everything, but now we are having to learn from them. So in essence, we are searching for our own identity in their technology because they've become so far advanced. Let's think about some of this identity and searching through the technology, how we are changing. If we think about the idea of AI and what it really is, it's a theory. It's that humans are constructing intelligence and actions through this artificial intelligence. In other words, the artificial aspect, the robot itself, takes on human characteristics and abilities to actually construct its own life. It has many a different aspects to it, but some of the key are one, speech, or speech recognition. Today, if we look at it, we can talk to, and there's new German innovations about thermostats in homes. We'll get a little deeper in the next lecture about these innovations, but you can speech, text, or just shout out, and we see this in the new ideas from Amazon about saying what? Everyone's seen the idea of the little Amazon cubes or 
the pucks to where you can yell out, turn on the radio. Same thing's happening now with your wireless thermometers. I can actually text to my thermometer. I can text or adapt and have it set up so when I get close to the house from the university, it turns my air conditioning on. It turns it off when it recognizes my cell phone and I am so far away. There's motion. We see this in the sweepers and the technology we've adapted as well from there. More important, there's decision-making processes to where the artificial intelligence is actually making decisions for us. It's understanding the temperature outside versus the temperature inside and that it would be better for it to turn on now to save power or shut off at 10 o'clock at night when I know as I'm sleeping and not motion filled and able to save me some electric costs. There's a language translation issue, but that's going away as well. And if we think about society, which we'll look at in two minutes, that language is always the key to the barriers to how we communicate and talk or why we won't work together or innovate together or do business together. But that is decreasing because of innovations that are coming across the sea. One of the cool things is everybody says, well, when will reality and AI kind of directly connect? When can we talk to the robots through our minds or control things? What's happening? Elon Musk has always been this innovative person from cars to solar powered cars and technologies and housing, which we'll talk about in another lecture. But more importantly, one of his Neuralink projects is the actual cerebral implants. One of our other lectures earlier, we talked about he, how CMU and Pitt have done and created robotic thoughts in a human to translate to a human arm. Well, this mind mapping technology is happening today. You can see here in this photograph, which is kind of cool, that they're actually starting to catalog brave the brain waves and the mind's interactions through these helmets to actually help and assist others or to do things through our mind to make the computers work for us even deeper. If you're interested, you can see on the left, there are some of the resources where I found this. And you can look even deeper into the Japanese Times articles about this information and about how this technology is changing life already today. Think about what health implications this will have down the road. Someone who needs to regenerate cells might be able to work with it, their own personal self through robotic aid to help generate loss. A stroke patient who can't speak might be able to put this on their head and through a computer speak just from the mind. An interesting thing I found in Tibet was how an actual uh, scientist has worked together to create a methodology for a colorblind artist in the UK, this Neil Harbison, to see through implants in, in his brain frequencies of color that gives him meaning so he can now see color. This is done through frequencies and an implant of an antenna into his mind, into the brain. It's amazing what's happened. You can see the little adaption here. Think what the road's going to bring us. There's kind of this, uh, let's call it, journey we're starting to see. Uh, you know, I told you about my dissertation in 2015 where I really looked at how the 2D animation of anime from the Japanese culture was changing our relationship and building relationships. It also expressed empowerment and sexuality. Today, the 3D animations are now reaching across the pond. I was actually able to go now, just recently, in July, and see one of these concerts in San Diego. I know there's now ones in L.A. and New York that are scheduled yearly that you can check out. And I'm sure that's going to come across the board and reach into Atlanta and Pittsburgh and some of these major cities as we grow over the next couple of years. Some of the cool technology that's out, and a lot of you have discovered this, is the wearable technology. We are seeing the innovations of Google Glass, but it's really becoming an adaptable part of society in Japan. This may or may not work.
Sorry, gang, it's a little bit slow. <laughs> It's interesting, I'm going to stop just for a second, that what you're seeing there is a technology that's actually put into a thin layer of plastic. Where can this technology be used? Ah, clothes. Could you imagine putting this onto a child's clothing or having a part of their clothing? It's cool for an artistic appeal for a wedding, but it also could be part of a child wears a ring that sends off a locator if the child is lost. You could have lights woven into the fabric if you're a jogger. Charging stations are already happening today that we're seeing a lot of these. I have one for my watch. But more so, if you look at how they're incorporating the 3D animation in the glasses, it really changes the way their culture is seeing everything. It's becoming part of fashion, becoming part of everyday life. It's less and and intrusive in the culture and so it's being adapted a lot faster than what we're willing to take on but we're starting to see it now. Uh, one of the cool things that I saw in innovations and it's going to come deeper out is this idea of uh, the tap. It's allowing you to use any surface to become a keyboard through traditional keyboard strokes of the idea of QWERTY is what they call the keyboard or the QWERTY keyboard and you can do this just through sensing of motion. There's another one, I'll show you a little example of this, but look at this art itself. This art itself is actually part of, of an innovation to where you can swipe on it to activate music, you can touch on it to activate your computer or stop or pause. It's all becoming parts of an art form that's tattooed right onto your body. These are removable, of course but the bands and they're using them in all different forms. You'll see here that this one actually shows temperature of a body. It might be interesting if your child's sick to have this innovative wearable piece of art that they're not so worried about a thermometer being intrusive in their mouth or something, but you can sense if they're too warm or too cold. Let's take a look for one second at some of these platforms. The generation two model, the generation can, last two model two. can last just up for to one two. second. Let's pop back and just look at how cool this is. Which showcase the Jester interface, interface, interface has finally become a reality. Well, at least sort of. Well, at least the sort of. Device works by the device works by fabric, utilizing smart which fabric, fabric, which detects finger movement. And in return, you can and connect, in return, and type, you can on connect and type on an imaginary with keyboard with most Bluetooth devices, including your phone. It does this by detecting your hand position in a three-dimensional space and using an app which tells you which key you're pressing. Now, I do think this device will have a little bit. I'm not giving you guys ideas on how you can cheat on your tests in class, but. It'd be pretty interesting to be able to sit and tap on your thigh underneath a desk. Oh, wait, maybe I just did. I'll have to watch out for that next, I guess. Of a learning curve. Of a learning but curve. But some of the other technologies, I'm going to speed ahead just this to this. Very thin, this very thin circuitry bendable circuitry, which attaches to your skin and, and acts as a hard tattoo. temporary and tattoo. It and it can also complement to create any kind of fully custom device. device. So the first type of class, so turns, type your of class turns, turns your tattoo in a trackpad so you can play games or even control your MP3 player. The second type of class can light up and even change with your body temperature. And finally, number three can transmit data, such as NFC the dual skin is definitely the dual skin a cool is definitely innovation, a cool which, I'd innovation which I'd like to see so on the market. it's pretty wild that you can think about this being an art form, expressive, an innovation, and able to store and move data. Just think about how they might be doing this in espionage today. Who knows what's out there? I guess we start having to watch it, everybody, and look over our shoulders. But how else is technology and life changing from these innovations in Japan? Let's think about the language barriers. That's always one of the most interesting parts to me because it's the thing that stops business. I'm going to skip over to playing on just a regular YouTube link. It'll be a little bit faster. But watch this. <laughs> So if we had this type of innovation, which is pretty cool that it speaks 
you speak to it, it translates into the language of your choice, we're seeing Japanese here, that you would actually be able to travel with ease, you'd have less language barrier problems. Most of the common cities today, if you go, people do speak English. But when you go into rural areas to where you want to really experience what life is like in Japan or somewhere else, like Slovakia where I went recently, you can't translate. I was drawing pictures at a restaurant to order fish because I couldn't read the menu. So I would draw little tiny fish, how we used to do as kids, you know, the figure eight and a fish symbol. This could have changed my whole travel plans to where I wouldn't have felt so uh, stoppable or where I really shouldn't go there because I can't breach this language barrier. Plus, it would generate new friendships and relationships. We see this a lot today with the idea of other technologies. And let's take one look at a second here. Sorry. Uh, some of the wearable fabrics, but I want to go into another thing, but the wearable, just on this idea still, the wearable fabrics is becoming in itself a way for other people to create and exchange ideas. Think of this if you can't speak. You use sign language. Think about how you could use wearable fabrics and clothing and techniques to actually breach that barrier with other people, or you could speak to someone easily. Uh, real quickly, I'll show you a piece for a second on this and the innovation, how 3D is being grasped through the fabrics and all the motion is being captured in the cameras. It's pretty amazing. If you look at the screen, even animations of what this person is reflecting is coming out in that idea. It really changes the way we translate thoughts, do business, advertise, and market material in the world as well. Again, language barriers are a huge issue. I mean, today we have words with friends, and I love watching this because it's one of the things I actually encourage in classes is students to break the language barrier and the cultural barrier, the race barriers, and gender barriers through gaming. I have friends around the world that I play the game with. I Skype with friends around the world. This morning I Skyped with a peer that's in Greece helping her write her dissertation. We can do YouTube shares and we can become scribers ourselves. There's a lot of different ways this has changed, but one of the cool ways too is Hi. that Hi. watch this little infomercial that they're making and you could create this idea through an Anyone app as well. Anyone can learn, can how, to learn how to visit Japan. someone's house in Japan. In this lesson, in this you, lesson learn you learn how. Ben has arrived at, ben has friend arrived at his friend Taichi's house. Let's watch. Let's watch. Ben des. Ben. Ben. Irasai. And so that video, you're learning language, and they're doing it through essentially an animate type of idea again. And you can do one of these yourself if you go to and sign up for GoAnimate.com as a website to where you can make one of these. Maybe you make your report or do something for one of your peers, or maybe you make something for a family member to express how happy or joyful. Or maybe it's something that you want to use with your relationship with your boyfriend, girlfriend, or peer, partner, to tell them how you're feeling. But all these innovations are easily expressed now. It's coming out of the culture. Uh, again, that site is GoAnimate. But this has become an idea for teaching people how to learn Japanese who want to do it in a fun, creative way. A lot of these ideas today are influenced by the Japanese culture, their technology, their innovations. As we go through the rest of this semester, I'm going to add in more lectures and talk about ideas deeper. Again, we'll talk about the idea of automation in, in the industry of automobiles alone, or housing, and how we're changing with solar technologies, innovative green ideas. 
These are all cultural pieces of innovations coming out of Japanese technology. And I look forward to sharing with you some of these ideas over the next month to two months during our semester. For today, have a great day. Go out and experience something new. Maybe you look into some of these 3D animation videos and get excited about the theme and go check out a concert. I did. It only took me about five minutes to get hooked and I had to go find one. I hope you had a great day today. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. I look forward to talking to everyone soon. Take care, everyone.